Dear friends, welcome back with another machine on the Van Hub, which is W thirty four KN three SS one. The link will be put into the description section below, so that you can download and play the machine if you want to. This machine, from my point of view, is a bit funny, which will involve Python decompiler. And、um, possibly you will have some problem with this compiling. I, I, you will see what I mean when we get there. Before we go ahead, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like below. You're greatly appreciated. So enough talk. Let's just get started. We can head over to Kaninix VM. First of all, we need to discover the IP address of the target. The utility I'd like to use, as always, would be net discover. As you can see over here, the IP address has been recognized as two hundred and thirty-nine. So what shall we do next? We need to do port and self-scanning with a map. To save time of this video, I've already completed before, so now we can just get out its result. And as usual, I used the options like scene scan, the virtual scan, the default script scan, followed by the dash p dash to do the full range port scan. The last option of all is o n to output the result into this file. Although the IP address, as you can see here, has been changed, which doesn't matter because I need to re-import it the target machine into the virtual box. So this time, you know, in many cases, the machine will get a different、uh, IP address. From the map scanning results, we can tell that the target has three open port numbers. The first one is twenty-two, which is running SSH service, and also the version information open SSH, and even the exact version number seven point six. This version is not updated, but、uh, I don't think we can find any. Availability except the Uslim emulation availability, which is not what we want at this point. The second one is eighty, which is running HTTP service, and also the version information Apache two. And the last one or the third one is four four three, which is running SSL. You know, normally this port number is reserved. For the SSL or TOS, and the web server is Apache two, as well, and get some certification information like date, doesn't represent time, and subject we can got a common name. So from here, the host name or domain name information is leaked to us. We can copy. Maybe afterwards we need to access this domain name, so the domain name would be this one, weakness, and、um, I think that's all for the maps results analysis. So what are we going to do next? We need to we need to do emulation by. Emulating the web application first, which is running on the port number eighty. Let's fire up the browser to access this port number or this application, and we can put the IP address of the target into the address bar of the browser. Press Enter, and we got the Apache two. Default page. When you do the 
you know, when you do the CTF like machines, we must check carefully the page, the content. Sometimes we can get something unexpected, but、um, this is not the case for this machine. And as usual, we can check or view the page source. You know, sometimes comments will 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 review something important, but not here. Next, we need to check whether the site has a Lobot file or not. Not found. So next, we can launch the link to to do the. Automatic immersion. Press enter. We can use the dash h option to specify the target. And a lot of output by Nikto, such as request header, and also some directories test. So maybe we need to note down such information. So the DERS would be test. So the only important information which we get from the Nikto is this directory. And before we move on, it will be better to access、uh, this directory right now. So it's all about keys. So we are going to need keys, lots of keys. You know, this is a very clear message left by the author or hint left by the author. We need to get keys, but where to get? You know, this is the problem, and we can check its source code. Not too much information or code, not too much HTML code. And we need to save the picture to the Kalinux, and then we can use some techniques to analyze this picture. The first one I'd like to use would be Exif Two. This utility can give us metadata of this picture or this file. Keys. You know a lot of metadata with this picture of this picture image. What with this head, but from the perspective of punctuation, all of information is useless. Are、uh, useless. So I think we need to continue our immersion, and we can launch the GoBuster to do the directory immersion. Directory extension option. Press enter, and almost immediately, GoBuster found some important discoveries like blog directory. We can note down this information to our notebook, and also uploads directory. And upload page. Of course, we need to take a look into those, these directories or files by the browser manually. So this should be the blog, but nothing at all under the blog directory. So let's move on. The uploads directory. Uploads directly. Hmm. Also nothing. Next, upload PHP file. Oh, great! Here we found this page, where we are allowed to upload the file. So I think we can upload. Malicious file like PHP reverse file, and 
I think I've already got this file ready. Yeah, this one. You can get it from Pentest Monkey website. So I've already downloaded it before. So of course you need to uh, make some changes to this file, such as IP address of the attacking machine. Also, if you want, you can modify the port number to any uh, anyone what you wish. Okay, for me, I will use the. 555 as my listening port number on the Linux. Okay, so next we can browse and navigate to our working directory. Select, open it, and go. Hmm, although we didn't get the error from the target, we get this message instead. And it seems this is encoded message. We can copy and use command line to decode. Of course, also you can use subchap online surface to, to do that. But uh, command line would be faster. We just test this script. So this should be some sort of Rapid hole. Although we didn't get error or we didn't notice any control by the, you know, any control in place by the with by or with the web application, but uh, I think we cannot do anything uh, with this upload feature. And also on the right, you can see this is the picture. And if you want, you can download this picture to Linux as well and analyze it with the techniques what I have already demonstrated now. To save time of this video, I will not repeat those steps here. So how to do? I think we have already walked through all of discoveries by the GoBuster. And next, we need to, you know, emulate the another port number or another web application, SSL, and press enter. And of course, we can accept the risk and continue. It looks like we get the same side or content from the target. But uh, we need to make sure uh, nothing different uh, with this new or second web application. And also we can check the robots file. But nothing here. Next, we can launch the negative again. What I'm doing. And we can use HTTPS. But um, nothing here. So, next, if you want, you can launch GoBuster to do the direct enumeration again. But I'd like to tell you. Uh, we cannot get anything else. We we can get the same results uh, for this or for the second web application which is running on the SSL. So, what to do next? Do you remember? At the initial stage, I mean the map scanning, we have already got the domain name. Yeah, this one. So I think next we need to put this domain name into the hot file, okay? And we can paste the domain name here. Oh, sorry, we can tunnel to T command. Of course, we need to use sudo. 
Otherwise, you know, current user doesn't have a permission to modify the host file. It's done. Next, we need to repeat the steps of emulation. Of course, this time we need to access the domain name rather than IP address. So keep following the white rabbit and this rab white rabbit, right? And here, so this should be the possible username. We can copy possible username. As usual, we can check its source code, but uh, nothing else. And uh, next, we need to access Lobot's file. Forget it. All right. So next, we can launch the negative again. Weakness, weakness. G T H. To see, uh, this time we can get uh, different discoveries or not. Mm. We got a private directory. You know, this is different from the from the first time. You know, we access the target uh, by the IP address. We can copy and put over here. Next, we can access this directory. Hmm, we got uh, two files. So the my key and although this is the public key, as you know, to SSH to the target, we can use both password or private key. Of course, the public key here is not uh, useful. And um, also we can get the notes on the right. So this key was generated by OpenSSL and its corresponding version information. And do you still remember that um, the author has left one message? You know, we need to get a keys, a lot of keys. Do you remember? So at this point, I think, what are we going to do next? We need to get the key. We need to get a private key. And also we have already got the possible user name. N30. However, how to get the key, especially private key, because the public key itself doesn't play, you know, doesn't work. Okay, so how to do? Maybe near here, we need to check its vulnerability or not. We can use such a sprite and open SSL. Actually, yeah, this version of open SSL has exploits available in Python and also Ruby. But, uh, you know, I think all three exploits uh, must um, have some common points, which is which are just written in different code. OK. And just we can first have a look at this text file, although this is not uh, exploited code. This would be instruction of exportation. OK, so we can use and paste over here and we can cut out this text file. And give us some information about this vulnerability or exploit. So the OpenSSL, this particular version has one issue that the only uh, this 65,536 possible SSH keys generated. So in other words, it's possible to brute force the private key and public key. 
cause the only entropy. Entropy is the pit of the process generating the key. This leads to that the following per script can be used with the pre-calculated SSH keys to brute force the SSH logging. You know, when I did the machine the first time, I tried to run this Python script, but failed to get it get it work. I don't know. This should be working. So maybe we need to manually exploit this vulnerability. And we can follow the steps you can see over here. First of all, we need to download the the all possible key pairs. We can copy. You know, this is a bit large file. We can use wget. Hit enter. And it's downloading. This is the compressed file. Of course, we can decompress without issue. As you can see, the you know all possible key pairs are there, and uh, and this should be no if the file no pub extension, this would be private key we can copy to take a look at uh, this one. Oh, sorry, we can paste. You know, this is a private key. So how to do next? We can just, you can see over here, we need to we need to get extracted, of, of course, I've already done that. We need to feed the public key, and this public key will be matching to all, uh, all public keys, uh, what we have already downloaded from the GitHub. And if found, and then we can find its corresponding private key. So I show you what I mean. We can use grip. And we can use the R option. You know, this will do recursively uh, search under the current working directory. And, of course, sorry, I need to copy uh, the public key first. Oh, I've already, I didn't uh, download the public key yet. So, of course, we need to download. And then we can cut out this public key, and this would be the public key. So we can use this string or public key, uh, the keyword to search or grab. And, and uh, the, of course, I want to search all files under the current directory. And also the option of L, option means we do not want to the the data itself, which contains this string. We want to get the file name, which contains this uh, string, okay? And we can hit enter. Uh, of course, this one, you can, you can, oh, sorry, you can, of course, the last two, you can ignore it, you ignore them. This is the, when I did the machine the first time, this is my history data, okay? So actually we found the public key and it's public key should be using the same file name, okay? So we can use, oh sorry, we can use copy and we can copy this pass without the pub extension to current working directory. So far we have already uh, got the private key, yeah, this one, and the next we can access to the target with this private key, and SSH, and uh, we can use the I option to specify the private key, and the username, what we got earlier, and we can press enter, yes, it does work, wonderful, right?
And then next, we need to do some local immigration. Of course, we can, in the meantime, we can retrieve the use of flag and the code. So here, almost immediately, we can notice this uh, file, which is highlighted in green. It means that this is executable. We can run it. However, uh, this file is not executed properly. We got some gibberish data like syntax error. Uh, system started should generate your new hash. Hex digest. So maybe this code from here, the pi, this code, this file is generated by the Python, okay? But uh, it would be better we transfer this file to the to the Caninix to make furthermore analysis. You know, this should be very clear uh, instruction or direction left by the author. We even we even do not need to do some other emulation on the target machine. Okay, so how to transfer uh, this file to the to the Caninix? For me, I will use this way. This way, of course, the, or I will use the Python three. But we need to check Python three first. Python three is there, and then we can use the HTTP server module to set up the web server on the Caninix. So next, we can download uh, this file to Caninix to the local machine code. And then we can use a file command to get the type of this file. Indeed, this is the Python compiled file. It means that this file is PYC file or the, you know, this is the middle uh, in the, how do uh, I call it? The compiled file by the Python. So this will uh, make the uh, make running uh, faster. Okay. So to get the actual code of Python, we need to decompile it, and uh, to decompile, decompile a PYC file. There will be two ways. The first one is online surface, online surface, service. For example, like this one, you maybe you can get many such online service like this one, but uh, I will put the li link into the description section uh, anyway. And another one, we can use the command line on compile pi six, okay? And uh, by default, uh, this utility is not, uh, uh, is not, um, in on the Caninix, but uh, to install this module will be very easy. We can use the pip command followed by the followed by the module name. Okay, and I've already done that before. So, you know, this one is the construction to install it, and uh, after you install it, and then we can use it. No problem. And of course, I install this module under the virtual environment. So next, I need to activate the Python virtual environment. Next, we can use this. Press enter. However, we got the error. I, I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, possibly you will have this issue for also. And uh, UTF sixteen, you can copy this one and to to, to use the Google to make some research, but uh, but I want to tell you, I di I I didn't get uh, something useful to solve the issue, and uh, to be honest, this issue can be solved very easily. You just uh, you know modify or add the or append the extension of PYC and now we can run it even if you 
do not you if you upload the directory of uh, this code to the this file to this online service like the, this one you will get some error even we didn't uh, uh, the detailed error message like the like the in the command line so very important we need to add the extension okay so now we can use As you can see here, we have already decompiled uh, the uh, this uh, this file, and this is the Python, and uh, here some string, some concatenation. So it looks like if you look at the strings or characters, n thirty, you know this would be the username, right? So comma. So maybe this would be the password for the, the this user. You know, sometimes if you want to escalate your privilege, for example, you can run sudo. However, we need to, uh, you know, we need to supply the password for the, this user. Okay. Let's go back. So possibly the password password is from the these characters. We need to combine all of characters, and you can manually write it down each character, and then you know combine it. But for me, I will use a simpler way or more effective way. We can copy uh, these lines. Sorry, we can copy, and we can launch the Python, and paste over here and then we can print out this valuable and this should be the password for the user we can copy and now we if we run the sudo again by supplying the password actually this user can run all commands great so the privilege escalation would be very very easy we just run bash and we can navigate to root directory to grab the root flag. So that's pretty much it. I'd like to see you in the next one. Bye. Have a nice day, please.